the end, will the truth set you free? Or will it always just be held against you? Like the deets, receipts, the DMs, the texts that your ex got a hold of. Mm. Well, we are going to be looking at this age-old question today through the lens of the Kamala Harris Brett Bear interview, the Jerry Seinfeld comments in which he backpedals a little bit off his controversial cancel culture remarks. And last but not least, throw all of your Vanderpump housewife reality tea away because this RFK love triangle rectangle I don't even know scandal is so good is so juicy literally bravo who and as per huge we may just find out today so stick around this is talk to me taylor deemed the celebrity whisperer by playboy this is the best interview of the day thanks for having me you hit the nail on the head 100 percent. period yeah touch them okay they're cracking me up wearing them baby ah! this is good taylor ferber everybody so the kamala harris fox news interview heard around the world i gotta say i give her props for doing this interview i really do i was actually shocked because up until this point her team was not going to allow this woman with a 10 foot pole with like two joe biden lengths worth of any outlet that was not going to be giving her breast milk, coddling her at night, and giving her a softball little league practice interview and worry that she would slip up and say something dumb, have a brain fart, whatever it is. But alas, we find her on Fox News. So I definitely give her props for that. She went on Brett Barr's, what is it, special reports. And all I have to say is, you know, if you want to see how it's done on special report, you should have just asked me, sweetie. I would have sent you the segment that I did when I was on a couple years ago talking about the Oscars inclusion controversy. There are big changes ahead for Hollywood's most prestigious award, and critics are howling about political correctness run amok. That's the irony and then hypocrisy, right? Because you have these people behind the scenes in high-level positions, and they're making these rules but they're not, not to be insulting, but they're old white men. How could we forget? I'm still waiting for my Emmy. I'm still waiting for a personal call from Brett for, you know, upping the ratings on that one. But until then, you know, maybe my carrier pigeon got lost away in the wind. But we have this sit down, which was just like a train wreck disaster for many of reasons. But the number one, the most prominent reason is that it because it was because it was just so obvious that Kamala Harris just couldn't be wrong. She couldn't admit that she was wrong. And she was just so defensive, right? And it just made her honestly not look great. But in the end, in the end, people, it's all not for not. Let me explain. There were a couple of examples here that were just striking to me. The first is when Brett Barr called her out for immigration and the complete and utter shit show that's going on at the border, right? With illegal immigration and record highs and how there were reportedly like 6 million that have come in and all sorts of like crime and more just bad stuff happening all around. And basically calling out, pinpointing the exact like what went down, what Trump policy they had reversed, like just like where it all went awry. Asking if she regretted any of that. Were there any mistakes along the way? Like a deer in headlights, there is Bambi reincarnated. You know, Bambi, I don't think was Indian, like I think Kamala Harris is today, but I digress. Blaming it on someone else, something else that deflecting in this case, like blaming Trump, blaming Congress, all these other things, right? And it's like, we're not talking about that right now. Like, do can you just admit there was some fumbling here? So that was the first one. The other one is the good old campaign slogan that she's running on, which is, you know, a new chapter and turning the page. Given that Kamala Harris, this has been 
the Biden administration, in which she has been vice president for the last three and a half years, Brett Barr asked her point blank, like, turning the page from what? Like, turning the page on yourself? Or who are we, like, turning the page from? Are you cloned? Like, what's happening here? And the thing about this, too, is that he asked, I thought that it was really tough, but it was really fair because he asked things that we have all been wondering and thinking and pondering to ourselves at night. Like, are we crazy or what is actually going on here? Right. And like sidebar, but you have the mainstream media being like, oh, this was like so hostile. And it was this was a debate. It was an interrogation. Again, sorry for the first time. You guys just are so, your eye is so unused to an actual journalist, like not painting her nails today and asking her tough questions that we actually want to know and that we should, she should be held accountable for, right? So the tur turning the chapter is the other one. And this is where I say where it's like, again, uh, like it's not even like an expertise weave, you know, Bob moment because it's like just stare, sitting there blankly staring into space literally leaving her body look like cat's got your tongue what's going on blaming trump and again it's like this isn't even about him right now lady like what are we even saying here come on, in the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and President. i both know what i'm talking about you and i both know what i'm talking about i actually about. don't what are you talking about and thus just looking like you're lying looking like you were caught in your tracks or just like kind of looking dumb and deflecting right the third was dodging the topic of Biden's cognitive decline. You know, the reason that she's the chosen one and the chosen presidential nominee for the Democrats in the cycle, like, this is the reason. You know, just ask Cardi B, who's like somewhere hungover after her birthday party, just go ask her. Okay. I will never, ever drink again. I will never pray for me. Wait, I'm drunk. I'm so drunk. In one, in one breath, you're saying that he was like up to speed. He is sharp as a tack in there making all these decisions with him. And he is moving and he is shaking. He is break dancing. Like he's doing all of the things. He's break dancing in the Olympics, basically. And, you know, I, I don't regret anything that was done. And it's a Bidenomics and all of it is doing a great job. And even George Clooney, who was such a supporter of Biden, shortly thereafter was like this when everybody then decided to like rail against Biden and, and, and like poison his oatmeal and throw him out. George Clooney was one of the people who turned around after, which was controversial in and of itself. So it's like, okay, three days ago, he was fine and like hibbity jibbity all around town, like making policy. And now suddenly like George Clooney was like, he's just not the same Biden he was like weird how that works, but okay. And he brought that example up with Kamala Harris. And this is where it's crazy because in the same breath, she's like, this will not trying to separate herself. Like this will not be the Biden administration. Biden is not on the ballot. I will not be a continuation. So which is it? On one end of it, my immediate reaction watching was just like, you can't be serious right now. Like just at like what a missed opportunity because you could have at least had a moment of self refl reflection and been like you know what not that trump is a mastermind either at this by the way this guy's lying left right sideways he would literally death before d dishonor before this guy right and it takes one to know and i'm gonna get to that i'm like that too what would it have been like if she was like you know what yes like we were we were misguided about this. We were short-sighted about this. We didn't see this outcome. We misstepped here. Here's what could be better. But no, instead, it's like, again, this won't be a continuation. But at the same time, he's fine and everything's fine. Everything's right. It's just like, just own up to a little bit. And I thought if that happened, I feel like we, the American people, would be like, oh, my God, thank you. Finally, like, yes. Like, you know, maybe have a little bit more regard. Like, there's somebody in there. Like, hello, knock, knock, you're home. Lucille, but I don't know, something's happening there because this whole time she's been this caricature because of all this cross-wiring, nothing is clear despite all the let me be clears and we don't even really know, right? But then I thought about it. And when you, you have to realize that this was all calculated because at the end of the day, if she was like, you know what we did, we did misstep, that was a fuck up on our part, our, our part, our bad. Like, we're going to do better. What would that get her in the end? Think about it. it. Conservatives would just be like, you're a loser and I'm not voting for you anyway. And probably Democrats would be like, oh, that, that's what, like they would. They're blinded by everything anyway at this point, like brainwashed to the end degree. So it's like Josie and the Pussycats, the movie, but all in our real lives. 
all day, every day. So what would the outcome be just to like make her look bad? Like what would it really get her in the end to admit shortcomings and failures? What would it, re- what would it accomplish? And so that's why, like I've said before, don't write her and her team off. Because as much as, as much vacancy, as much confusion and incoherence and inconsistencies as they are, all of this was calculated, right? And how much do all of us actually, we all do this. Like we all do a little white lie. We, I mean, this is a little arguably more than that, but we all kind of lie and fib to save our ass, to protect something, our reputation, our egos, are standing with someone in this case like the whole fucking country but you know who's counting all I have to say is this is literally like the biggest lie the turn of the century you know since the Bill Clinton I did not have sexual relations with that woman right because I thought about it, it's like same thing she would flirt with me in the most innocent ways <laughs> if he owned up to it at the time what would he have gone would he really have been regarded like thank you bill thank you for telling the truth about the jizz on monica Lewinsky's guy. like what a stand-up guy right it would have just made him even more despised by the right and would it really have like won him any sort of you know honor with his own party maybe they would even separate themselves from him and that's what i'm really exploring in the end here with all of these is when you do speak up about things and when you are honest and forthright even though it's virtuous like we all love what is real and true but in the end it's like it's almost like you get punished anyway and so that's why whether it be like bill clinton whether it be even if kamala harris was honest about being wrong and about failing like what would it have gotten them in the end not saying it's okay I'm just saying. So next up, we have Jerry Seinfeld, who backtracked, okay, all the way backing it up, like left, right to the back now, y'all, okay, because I don't have to be at a hoedown. I don't have to be at a bar mitzvah to know this one. Like, you know, I know, I know a shuffle when I see it, okay, And so if you remember a couple months ago, Jerry Seinfeld was buzzing all around town because he said the truth. But most people are thinking that the extreme left and politically correct society has killed comedy. And now he was on a podcast and he took it all back, guys. He had a come to Jesus or Kamala, whoever it is, moment in like, again, trying to catch their own tail and sort of come out with it, but not really, right? So he came out on a podcast. And at the time, too, his Seinfeld co-star, uh, Julia, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, said basically, like, that's complete hogwash. As comedians, we're supposed to, like, ch- we we are supposed to be in the fine-tuned weeds of, you know, the changing cultures and still be sharp and irreverent and politically on it and culturally on it and give that commentary and sort of, you know, go with go with the tides of the of culture and like where we're at. Right. So he basically reflected this now months later, he came on this podcast and said, you know, I actually take it all back. It's not the far left's fault. And, you know, we have speaking of do better, like we have to do better as comedians and we should be able to joke about, you know, that's the art of what we do, like to be able to get in these topics and where we're at and the temperature and nature of our culture and environment. Like we should be able to do this. That's the genius in science. <laughs> it's a science ass Fauci. God, I can't get this guy out of my brain. He has surely infiltrated it uh, amongst other things he's infiltrated. So I think with this, there, it's a little, there's truth in what he's saying, but I also feel like, did he really, you really just kind of like woke up one day and you were baptized, you know, by the culture and you realize you were completely wrong well i'm sure i had a good reason yeah, well if you'll kill this person who's to say i wouldn't be next but you know me i thought i did <laughs> it just feels a little bit disingenuous on one end of it i do with, agree with him he's right that is the gift of really brilliant and genius comics is that they should be able to still you know dave Chappelle, for example andrew schultz is fucking genius at this right we're gonna get to him in a sec being able to get into all of these, you know, awkward and uncomfortable and taboo issues in the crosshairs and do it still in a really sharp 
way that makes a point and makes us think and can still be totally sort of like inappropriate and out there and comical because that's one of the things that he recently sa said speaking up was like you know I get it like there's just certain things we can't say about groups of people and that's always been a thing and you know we need to work with that and not criticize it right but like I said on the other end of it I really I just feel like it's like okay like you really just had a 180 it's like we all know that's true and we've seen it because the proof is in the pudding babe you know what I mean First of all, you talk about Andrew Schultz, who, like I said, is really great at this, is really great at hitting really politically incorrect topics, but in a really genius way and like sort of doesn't give a fuck about it. But he recently interviewed Trump, which, by the way, got, I don't know, like it's it's up to it's at like four point five million views and it had one point five million in less than 24 hours. Right. And people are saying even Charlemagne the God that this interview with Trump could like get Trump in their like swimwear, like slaying right in like Chevy Chase in the polls because he was so funny and yada yada and all this. He has one ability I don't have. Yeah. He sleeps. He can sleep. This guy goes on a beach <laughs> and he lays down on one of those, you know, six ounce. They, they weigh six ounces and you can't lift it. Yeah. <laughs> so this just goes to show that Jerry Seinfeld was telling the truth that I'm calling BS on his new revelation because Lucy, stop it. Denial is a river in Egypt. Your husband <laughs> is gay. Out simply hours after the Andrew Schultz Trump interview, the uh Brooklyn Academy of Music literally pulled out and canceled an upcoming show he had. I think it was like a day before tickets were gonna go on sale. Like straight up cock blocked him. And wrote an email that said something to the effect of like, we just realized at this time, like, it's just not a suit suitable fit for us. And, you know, blah, 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 read between the lines, right? AKA, God forbid, you know, you interview a presidential me, the man who could very well be our president in, you know, a month's time. So that's where I call bull to the shit. Same thing, you look at Gina Carano, right? Gina Carano, who was very vocal during COVID, all this ended up being adored by conservative circles. She was a big star in The Mandalorian and it destroyed her career. Now she's building it back, but it sort of goes to show. It's like, first of all, Jerry Seinfeld wasn't wrong. And secondly, like this whole epiphany, right? It it's that idea, same thing with Kamala Harris. It's like, okay, so if he comes out now and he's like, guys, forgive me for I have sinned. Everybody, it should be this uptight and we as comedians just have to work around it despite the fact that we're canceled and our careers are ruined. Like silly me, silly rabbit tricks are for me, I guess. Like what would, what does it get him in the end, right? Because you have the people who were mad at him for saying this. They're not going to change their minds. They're going to be like, oh, that asshole. Well, that's what he said. And then it has the the rest of the common thinking folk like myself being like, it just, it doesn't even help. Like, it just feels disingenuous. And what did it even get you? Like, you should have stood by it, dude, because you were telling the truth. So maybe you're punished. Maybe it doesn't get you anywhere. I don't know. It is just, it's like the tortoise in the hair, but nobody fucking wins, basically. Okay, like, don't tell this story to your kids because it is not optimistic. So lastly, guys, I am on the edge of my seat. This is so good. Okay, this is juicy. Juicy could or thought okay the he said she said moment of our times but the rfk jr scandal going on right now that epitomizes all of this because it really makes you like take a look in the mirror like snow white herself and be like do i tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help me god or will it just ruin my career or is my is my livelihood and reputation already destroyed anyway like this is where there's just no point in any of it okay Try to stay with me because there's a lot of moving pieces, but trust me, bitch, it is fucking worth it. Like, again, your reality TV, your love island, your love is about this and that. Cancel your subscription. This is all you need. Okay. So star New York Magazine reporter, Olivia Nuzzi. She has, she's like 31 years old. Okay, this this lady's younger than I am and she's managing to stir up all, I'm feeling boring. I'm like, do I need some sort of like, say, this bitch is stirring all DC up. All right. So she's the reporter and she's, she's a notable reporter at New York Magazine. She's the one who wrote the 
um, article in July when everybody was coming out with their pitchforks suddenly overnight. Like they, again, woke up from their curse about how Joe Biden was no longer fit to serve as president. She wrote the story that was the conspiracy of silence around him. Um, she profiled uh, Trump after his, his first assassination attempt. And it was something like looking into his ear and his soul, like trying. I didn't read the article because for me, it's not worth it after the pay to get into the paywall. Like I'd rather get my Starbucks today. The consumerism like works hard. What can I say? <laughs> but, you know, trying to get into a more, you know, human side of him and all this. And again, I don't know if it had a slant either way, but. She also notably wrote a piece about the RFK Jr. campaign and how he was kind of throwing everyone off of their game. You know, the left was saying he was a conservative. The right was saying he was a progressive. And uh, that was last November. OK, now she has ex-fiance. Recently, ex-fiance Ryan Lizza, who's a star reporter over at Politico. Now, they broke off their engagement over the summer because allegedly this girl was having a year long, get this, sexting, like sending nudes affair with RFK Jr. There's all sort of like, I'm not going to get in the weeds because there's so many details. It is literally so unhinged, but I love it. Like leave it to political drama to get my nipples as excited. Okay. Detailing this affair in a court filing with all kinds of stuff about it. And there's something about like a book advance and money with both of them. Okay, that's not important at this point. Okay. Meanwhile, she's alleging that this ex, Ryan Lizza, you had physical violence and coercion against her and that she ordered a not, no contract order against him. Why, you ask? Because clearly you see already that shit went down. It went to Chinatown. It went to Little Italy. And here it is on my notes. Real, real Bible. Ask the Kardashians on my desk, okay? Allegedly, she was sending sexy nudes and in this entangled affair with RFK Jr., okay? But she... At some point down the line, and I don't know if this is her recent ex-fiance, Ryan Lizza, who said this, but basically that the nature of her fling with him was that he was very toxic and that he wanted, he said he wanted to control and possess and impregnate her and all this. So where is RFK Jr. and all this? Okay. Besides like Ma Maha, make America healthy again, all this. Okay. Maha, I don't know if it has a ring to it, but you know, She's not going to get a ring on it anytime soon because this shit's a whole big ass mess. Okay. So meanwhile, RFK Jr. is married to Cheryl Hines. She's an actress. She was in Curb Your Enthusiasm. I've met her and interviewed her a couple times. Great. Love Cheryl. Love a Cheryl moment. Okay. He's denying all this for the most part. And it is worth noting that he has in the past been documented for alleged sex addiction type behavior even people in like you know the vax questioning community maybe the maha mahalo i don't know i don't know hawaiian descent the maha make america healthy again community this is what gets even better okay there it, like can actually i need to call kamala harris because i need a venn diagram stat to help us figure kamala do you copy are you there blink twice if you survive that Fox News <laughs> experience. Meanwhile, he has a campaign insider who's saying that on one end of it, he blocked this woman, Olivia Nuzzi, because she was just inundating him with like porno pictures. But on the other end of it, acknowledged like what they were like kind of hard to, for him to resist, right? So again, obviously something went down. If the tech lords should put their energy anywhere you know what i don't care this is where the patriot act can come in handy okay get in this bitch get the deets get in their data and see what went down and as the final kicker you have the world's literal biggest troll on earth keith olberman who's come out of the woodwork for literally no reason at all to be like i at one point had an, a, a relationship with olivia nuzzi like he no one asked as per usual, right so there you go in a nutshell, this dumpster fire mess, but is it not so entertaining? No, it's so good. Like who knew that the journalists of the swamp 
of the capital of the in their pantsuits were getting jiggy with it. Like, like, is this Olivia Pope? I mean, it's a scandal if I ever saw one. It's so good. But when you think about the theme of this entire episode, I really thought about it. Obviously, there's truth in some of it. Who knows who's lying, who's fibbing, who's covering their own ass, who's embellishing. But I thought about it. It's like, what would all of these people have to gain for telling the truth? What would Olivia Nuzzi have to gain? What would Ryan Liz also the last names, Nuzzi and Lizza, like, did they plan this just to fuck us up and jokes on all of us, right? Tongue twister. Ryan Lizza, what would he have? And and certainly RFK Jr., what would he have to gain by telling the truth? Being so highly publicized, recently joining the Trump campaign, being married to a very famous actress. It's all wild. So what would any of them literally have to gain? When you think about it, because it seems like they're all a little fucking crazy, if you ask me. And if any of them were forthright in any capacity, maybe it's Olivia saying, you know what, like I did, you know, rile this up and and provoke this and embark on this journey. Or if it's RK saying, yes, I did dabble. Again, what would the outcome be? It It would make only people look at them and judge them and stigmatize them. Like, would it make anyone on the planet be like, oh, these pure, thank you for, thank you for, you know, doing the Lord's work and being for the, no, they're going to be on every New York Post cover from here until the end of time. And so this brings me to my conclusion here, which is our culture's obvious dilemma, because think about it, everything, all the time is a lie basically around us. When you think about it, I mean, my last episode was all about marketing ploys, how everything's marketed to us all the time. You think about even social media and Instagram, everyone pretending their lives are so perfect and really like they're they're a complete shit show. They are in therapy, psychotherapy with a straight jacket seven days a week, but not on Instagram, right? Everything is so political campaigns with politicians say celebrity, it's all fake. It's Hollywood, right? All fake. But then on the other end of it, We so, you know, appreciate and glorify and praise truth and honesty and vulnerability. We can't seem to decide, right? So what's it going to be? It's like we are really in this dilemma of something that we grapple with. I mean, you even think about it. This is like a superficial example, but when people do tell the truth, especially women, right, where it'll be like Pam Anderson, she's not wearing any makeup. Oh, how refreshing. Or like, here's this woman stretch marks and, you know, da da. it's like, oh, yay. woohoo! And so sometimes it is celebrated. But in most cases, when you really think about it, you're kind of punished anyway, kind of punished anyway, for telling the truth, right? Think about like Braveheart, right? In the end, it's like, confess, confess, confess. Maybe you do or you don't, you're getting killed anyway. It's that sort of idea. And I even think about it, right, personally. I mean, I think about a public time when I was truthful and I got punished. When I wrote a story about Chrissy Teigen for VH1 and what happened, I, I like I said, I told the truth and I was punished for it in a very public way that became a national news story. Now, do I regret any of it? No, I, I don't regret it. Like, I would do it 100 times over. I have no reg- no regrets about that, if you know what I mean. But when I really reflect on this on the whole, and it, 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 you know, I think about it, and I'm not advocating for people to lie, lie, lie all day long. It's a hard pill to swallow that I think there is virtue. I think in the end, there is power and truth. I think that truth wins. And it's really hard for us because, like I said, we always have something at stake. Trust me, I know. Okay. The, the joke inside, I'm an expert. Just literally call me Carrie Russell, the Americans, call me Kill Bill, Uma Thurman, call me Mrs. Smith, Angelina Jolie. The joke with my family and friends is that I'm the pretty little liar. Like I can like Doug, I can make you think I will literally mesmerize you and transport you to another place without even thinking twice. You won't even know, make you think you thought of it the whole time. Like that is, that is how I roll. And I have a, personally, I have a really hard time admitting and when I'm wrong and being wrong. That's why I'm, I've also been dubbed not only the pretty little liar, but the little Trump. Because like Trump, I just can't ever be wrong or can't ever admit that I'm wrong. 
But it got me thinking about this whole thing again. It's like, I, I really do believe at the end of the day, there is such power in truth. Ultimately, I think it's even more powerful than holding up the structures and the facades and the lies. And like I said, it's it's a hard thing for us to wrap our heads around because we hold on to that so tightly and in the end get punished for it sometimes. So at the end of the day, does the truth really set you free? Here's the reality. It may set you free, but it's a chance you have to be willing to take. I mean, just think of it like you are gambling. You are up in the casino day to day, baby. It's a chance. It's a gamble. Because the chances are you may just get shit on anyway. That right there is a truth. That is a truth that baby not even you can dispute.